Can't bask it anywhere. It's time to put some bait on the hook. Got a nice large hook here, which is what you use when using minnows. Going with minnows this time. Minnows are really good for bass and crappie. Uh, striped bass, you may want a, a little different hook, a little stronger hook. But for crappie and bass, uh, the gold looking hooks like this that are um, called crappie hooks, for that reason, uh, are excellent to use with a minnow. So we're gonna reach into our minnow bucket and try to grab one. We got pretty good luck this time getting a, a minnow. Now there's two ways for us to hook them. One is just behind the lips with the hook and go straight up, put them on like that. And that keeps the minnow lively. That's an excellent way to hook your minnow. Another way to hook your minnow would be to hook them in the back, avoiding any uh, organs that uh, would be damaged. So it's just going through the muscle tissue here, just like that. You want to have a large hook. This is why you want a large hook, is so that it's available to hook your predatory species that you're trying to catch. And so that's a minnow. This one happens to be a golden shiner, but fathead minnows work uh, very well too. And you can hook shad in the same way. I probably want to go through the back on a on a shad. That's fishing with minnows. Time to talk about worms. Seems like every predator in nature likes to eat worms. And they're easy to come across. Either dig your own in your garden or just buy them at your local bait store. Now I like to store them upside down. They'll work their way to the bottom when it's time to fish. You just flip them over and there they are ready to use. The other thing you can do is just kind of shake them around a little bit like this and they'll pop up where you can use them. Now if you're going to fish for something relatively small uh, like uh, different types of brim also known as uh, shell cracker or red ear sunfish or bluegill, uh, you may not even have to use a whole worm. If you're going to fish for something like catfish you may want to put one or two of these on there. Uh, another thing you can do, you can actually put them in some uh, water that maybe has uh, sat out for a while so it doesn't have that chlorine in it. And put your worms in there, keep them cold, and that way they won't be all dirty so you won't get dirt all over your hands. But we've got these where they'll stay safe for quite a while and we're going to hook them on our hook. Now I've got a size 10 hook. You may want to go larger for big fish. Or if they keep stealing your bait, you may even want to go smaller. But this is a size 10 hook, fairly strong. So if I get a catfish on there, I'll still be able to, to catch it. I'm going to hook it once through the middle. Hearing no complaints, I'm going to slide it up a little bit. And then I'm going to hook once near the wiggly end on one side. And then once near the wiggly end on the other side. And that is going to make it look good for the fish. And it's also going to make it stay on the hook better so they won't steal it. So there's a worm hooked three times. That hook is exposed down here. And when you feel a bite, you're going to want to lift your rod and start reeling in. Don't just reel in. Uh, you're going to lift your rod and then start reeling. Now there is a type of hook called a circle hook you could use that you don't lift your rod. You just reel in. But for most folks, they like the J type hooks like you see here. Aska anywhere. That means bugs too. But we're wanting these bugs because they're crickets to fish with. Uh, crickets can be found in a bait store and they usually will put them in a container like this for you. Or there's another type where, where they, they come out a little easier on uh, using that bucket. But this is a good bucket to keep the crickets in where you can use them. What we just do is reach in and grab a cricket. I like to grab them by the back end with their, their uh, legs. You have to be a little gentle. You don't want to squish them. And crickets uh, will try to bite you, but they, they're not going to hurt you. Just going to kind of tickle that, uh, that skin. A big one, you may feel it, but this one is uh, just kind of hanging on. Now, like any insect, they have a head, a thorax, and abdomen area. What we're going to do is slide this hook behind the head. And out through the back of the abdomen. So we're just going to put it in right here. One fell swoop, going to come out the back end, being careful not to hook our cells. And there we're ready to go. Now the nice thing about this cricket hook, it's light. Crickets will float. 
So even with this weight on, the weight will sink it to the bottom and the cricket will stand up. So you may or may not need a, a float with this fishing a cricket. Uh, if you use a float, you'll be able to tell when you have a bite more easily. But if you fish on the bottom, you may catch more fish. So it's up to you. But using crickets is an excellent way to catch bluegill. Uh, and you can catch uh, other types of bram and bass on a, on a cricket and sometimes catfish too. All right, ask it anywhere. Sometimes we want to fish with an artificial bait. Uh, maybe you're trying to catch that, that big bass and, and this is an excellent way to do that. Or maybe you just don't like poking and prodding uh, bait. But either way, it's fun to fish with uh, artificial bait. Uh, there's a variety to, to choose from. This one happens to be a type of topwater bait, so you would throw it out and then bring it in however the fish like it. So you may want to go in little spurts like that. You may want to just continuously run it. Um, but oftentimes, uh, fish will ambush from a location, so maybe there's a, uh, a log there that you would throw next to, and they would come up uh, from being at that log and attack this, this type of, of bait. So this is a topwater bait, excellent way to catch fish. Uh, there are some that dive into the water. Uh, that little bill on the front, the little clear uh, portion, helps it to go deep. And of course, if you have a bigger bill, it's going to run a little deeper. So this is an example of that. So this would run maybe uh, 15, 20 feet deep in the water column. So this may be kind of an advanced technique for, for uh, some anglers, but uh, another bait is one that just sinks. And so this one is going to vibrate as it goes through the water and is a good one to catch fish in ponds for sure. But the most uh, most popular baits are soft plastic baits. This one's small for like uh, uh, bluegill and other types of brim. Uh, it's got a little, a little uh, blade here that helps it to be shiny through the water. And you can throw this around uh, objects also uh, with the hook pointing up. It kind of glides over a lot of the things in the water. So this is a little beetle spin type of bait that's uh, very effective for bluegill and you can catch bass on that too. Other soft pla plastics may have a variety of looks to them, maybe uh, a big curly tail like that, or a little paddle tail, or a small curly tail, or just be straight. All of these are used with a type of uh, a hook special to soft plastics that has some sort of apparatus to help it to stay on on the bait, uh, either a little little uh, twist here in the in the uh, hook itself, or maybe just a couple barbs to hold it on to the bait. And one popular way to fish this is to put the, the line through the the nose and come come out almost immediately, about a quarter inch down, slide it all the way up, turn it around where it's uh, uh, hanging down across the hook point and you want to put that hook back into the bait so that it will lay there naturally. So I'm going to go into the bait and then turn it kind of around. You can see it's hanging pretty straight there, but the hook is buried in there. Uh, the negative about this is that uh, when you get a bite, you're going to have to pull that rod sharply enough that the hook comes through the bait and sticks into the fish. The good thing about this bait is it's not going to snag very easily. Most people would want to fish this with a weight ahead of the, the hook. Um, and some put a weight, you know, several inches above, above the, the hook. So uh, a lot of times you want to have that weighted. And you rig these others the same way. Uh, put the hook in through the point and then back to the belly. And let me just go ahead and get this paddle tail on on the hook so that you can see what that looks like. Again, again, you want to go right into the tip of the bait and come out very quickly, about a quarter of an inch, slide it on in, hang it on the bait so that it is straight and that will give you an idea where to put the, the point of the hook in and trace it around just like it was hanging next to the, the bait. You throw that out, you may or may not want some weight in front of that. Or you can use a jig, put this on a, a jig head like that first one that we had, where we have a little weight at the front of the hook, like this, and then the bait trail trailing behind it. So 
that's just some different artificial baits and you can either throw those out or just troll them behind the, the boat but they're most effective when they're thrown out uh, at a specific target like some submerged logs or uh, perhaps a long weed bed or something like that so the main thing is to go out and have a good time and catching fish is secondary but it can be a lot of fun I wanted to show you this circle hook uh, it's a little hard to see in the video but it's got just a little upturn of its point as you um, uh, there's a little upturn of the the hook right at the point and that makes it a little harder for for it to to grab you when something's going on so if you've got uh, if you're fishing with somebody that uh, maybe a little needs a little safety uh, advantage uh, having a circle hook, and that's what they'll be called on the package, is, is probably a good thing. Now, when you're using a circle hook, you don't uh, set the hook. You just let the fish run and tighten out, tight the line tighten up, and it will uh, usually catch the fish in the corner of the mouth. So it's good for catch and release, too. But you put the worm on the, on the hook the same way, and you can use these for minnows. You just would need a, a larger hook. And so you're going to put it once through the middle, once through each end and there you go you're ready and I usually like to have that point out and so you got a nice ball of, of worm and when the fish pulls you just let them have it a little, little bit and then just reel them in hopefully that'll work for you so a circle hook is just another type of, of fishing you just have to remember it's on your rod in line and you don't want to set your hook you don't want to lift that rod to get that fish caught 